behind me, that's the border between Macau and the Chinese mainland and I am going to pass through there now and then the plan is to make it to one of the biggest cities in China today and my goal is to end the day, to end this video with some delicious food there because that city is very famous for its food. But how we are going to get there and how long that will take, to be honest, I don't know. We have to figure that out along the way. But the first step now is to make it into the Chinese mainland. I hope actually I will be able to enter here. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure. So we have partidas, which means to leave, I think. It's Portuguese. Let's just go and figure it out. Yeah, I'm going to make use, or I hope I can make use of a new visa regulation. Since December 1st of the previous year, the citizens of some countries, including Germany, are allowed to enter China for 15 days without a visa. But yeah, I am not 100% sure if I am allowed to enter the country via every border point. How am I here? Not here? <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, usually I'm not allowed to film at these points, so hopefully see you on the other side. Okay, I made it out of Macau and this is kind of a transit zone now between Macau and the Chinese mainland. And yeah, Macau is a special administrative region of China, so they also have different visa regulations. So for example, in Macau, I was able to get with a German passport 90 days visa free stay. But yeah, in the Chinese mainland, it's different. So yeah, now the next step is to make it actually into the Chinese mainland. And I am back in Chinese mainland. Wow, that was actually a long process. I waited almost an hour there. And I think I never had an immigration officer looking through my passport as detailed as uh, the guy here now. But all good, I am in now. And uh, let me actually find a quiet place to tell you the plan now. Okay, so I am in a town called Suhai now. And we want to go to which should be about an hour away by train. And the good thing is, this right here is a train station. So I think we can just take a train there. And yeah, the rest of the plan, I will update you throughout the journey. But now before we continue, there's one thing that I need to do. You remember I was in Shanghai last year and one big problem I had there was that I was not able to pay with my phone. Everyone is using an app to pay and one of the most popular apps to uh, pay here is called Alipay. And I was under the impression that I as a foreigner cannot use Alipay. But then so many of you guys in the comment section told me, hey, you can actually use Alipay and connect it with your phone foreign credit card. So that is what I am going to try to figure out now. So we can find Alipay in the app store and then you can uh, install it. Luckily there is basically free Wi-Fi everywhere in China. So let's download Alipay. Of course you can also do that before you arrive in China but I thought oh, let's do it right here and uh, I show you the whole process. Okay so Alipay is installed now and then what I can do so you just sign up pretty easily. It was literally now less than a minute. And then, yeah, I can uh, just simply add my bank card here. So I'm going to uh, insert all the details here now. Oh, and just like that, literally half a minute later, I am connected with Alipay and my bank card, my foreign bank card is connected. Okay, so having Alipay will make my life a lot easier here in China because here yeah, last time it happened quite often that like the vendors did not accept cash or they didn't have change to give cash back to me. So this is going to make my life easier and I can basically travel and experience China now like a local. Actually, there's a 7-Eleven here. Let's test it out right away and buy something. This orange juice, please. Uh, scan here. Confirm? Ah, I need to confirm. Okay, thank you. All right, so that was pretty easy. Just like that, I can pay with the app. Wow, this will make my life a lot easier here in China. That is actually very great. Thanks to you guys in the comment section recommending this to me. Okay, so let's have a look at the train station. See if I can actually take a train from here. And by the way, I have a visa for 15 days now, or I can stay visa free for 15 days, I should say. And yeah, the plan is to travel around China. Then I'm going to leave for a week or so to another country. And then I'm going to come back to China so that in total I can stay about a month here. And so we are going to travel around China. Many different cities are on my list. So yeah, feel free to follow. Many China videos are coming. I'm very excited to explore this country and take you all along for the journeys, of course. And here we go. This is the train station. Or actually, I think I should take the escalator up there. Okay, so far it doesn't look like a train station here. It looks more like a mall. Many food options here as well. But yeah, I'm going to save my appetite for later. Okay, I remember Chinese train stations from the last time. The last Chinese train station I was at was in uh, Shanghai. Maybe some of you remember that video. It was total chaos and <laughs> very stressful just to navigate through the train station. So let me have a clear mind now. Oh yeah, here we go. Suhai Railway Station entrance. Uh, I can imagine that I need a ticket already to enter the station. 
that was the case in Shanghai. Actually, you can also book train tickets with uh, Alipay, with the app. If I open the app, there's the option trip, air or train. And then I can actually search for train tickets or also flight tickets within the app, pay via the app. It's connected with trip.com actually. So if I'm searching now from Suhai, it is now 2.30. Oh, it seems like there's a train like every 10 minutes or so. Okay, that's easy then. So then the next train is 2.53 takes an hour and costs 70 UN. Okay, I paid for the ticket, but I don't know where to find the ticket in the app and the train is leaving in 12 minutes. Okay, the solution was very simple. The ticket was at my email inbox. I think people are scanning their ID card or something here. Or maybe I should have booked a later train. The train is leaving in nine minutes. Excuse me, do you speak English? Uh -huh. Do you speak English? Yes. What do I need to scan here? Uh, you need ID card. You've seen me before. Yeah. I I make uh, YouTube videos. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I was in Shanghai last year. Oh, you come to Zhuhai. You're taller than, than the video. I'm taller than in the videos, yeah. yeah Most I people see, uh, say that. Oh, nice to meet you. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. how to enter a Chinese train station okay, as a foreigner. Okay, nice to meet you. Hey, bye. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, okay. Um, so how do I enter the train station now? Oh, there's somebody to talk to. That's great. Passport? Okay, looks like I have to show my passport to enter the train station. By the way, the train is leaving in six minutes. Oh, I cannot read this. No ticket. Ticket here. Oh, his screen said no ticket. Five. Five minutes? Ah, the ticket is for the wrong date. Mm. Ah, I think the ticket is for the wrong date. Oh, oh, one date. Okay, I, I buy a new ticket. Okay, okay. I did a stupid mistake, I booked the ticket for the wrong date. Your booking has been submitted. Okay, ticket for today. Now we don't have uh, the time rush because the train is leaving in like 45 minutes. But I have to pay double now, but it was my own mistake. So when you buy a ticket here, it seems to be always connected to your passport or your ID. Okay, okay, seems to work. Okay, let me get through security and then we have to figure out where the gate is, what train number. I like to be in new places. This is what makes traveling so exciting for me. And yeah, traveling in China is especially exciting for me. I remember last year when I was in Shanghai, this was just a different feeling compared to other travels. Uh, like being in a new country is always exciting for me, but the feeling of being in China was something special. I don't really know why, probably because it's a more unique country. So traveling in China is a bit more exciting for me. And that's why I'm so happy to be back here. And now I have more time here as well than last time. And yeah, this is what the Chinese train station looks like here. We have train numbers, we have departure times, and we have platform numbers. C7664, C7664, check in A1, platform 2. 340, 340. Okay, okay, tschüss. Okay, that means I have about 20 minutes to kill now. Oh, whew. Stressful so far. I mean, it is now 3.15. I was at the border at 12.45, something like that. So that's like three and a half hours now just to get through the border and make it to this place here. So I'm just researching a bit more about Alipay and I'm um, having a look through the app, what options I actually have with the app. And yeah, you can book flights, you can book train tickets. It's all connected with the trip mini programs, which is basically trip.com, which many of you probably know. And you can also buy tickets for tourist attractions, for example. And yeah, literally, like I said already, pay anywhere. Okay, the gates are open. And I'm not sure what everyone is scanning here now because the ticket has no QR code or something. Oh, I see other people, Japanese people here. Oh, I think the passport needs to be scanned here. So this is probably just for the locals then. If you have a local ID card, you can scan it here. The foreigners seem to have an extra line. Okay, I think it works like this. I think that every ticket is connected with either an ID card or a passport. Which is actually pretty smart, to be honest. Train stations in Germany, where I am from, you can even enter to the platform without having a ticket. And that leads to, yeah, we have very dirty train stations. We have mainly homeless people sleeping in train stations. And all of this, what you have to do here, prevents things like that, to be honest. I don't think this is a fast train, though. By the way, I am going to take a Chinese high-speed train in a few days to the next city. So that is going to be an interesting journey and an interesting video as well, I think. Let's find out what the train experience in China is going to be like. One hour train ride. We have card number seven here. 
And then seat number 11A. 11... 11A. And here also in English, window and aisle. And I have the window seat. Whew, I feel relieved now. I think the first stressful part of the journey is over. And then, yeah, once we arrive in... It's a big city, 20 million people. And my hotel, that's... I can tell you that already, is not near the train station. So we have to figure out how to get from the train station to my hotel then. Okay, it seems like I actually do have two seats here for me. That's actually great. So I put my smaller backpack up there now. And I have the bigger one actually here, underneath the seats. And actually this area here is quite handy. You can actually place your phone here. I'm charging my phone now because you're yeah, running out of battery. It's basically like losing a wallet here when you pay everything with the app. And then I am excited for the rage. Okay, we have left the train station and yeah, so far it's a very smooth experience. The train is super quiet. You hear almost nothing, right? And uh, yeah, the seat is actually quite comfortable. I'm very lucky that nobody is sitting next to me, so I have more leg space for me. And yeah, just admiring the view here. It's so interesting to uh, take trains in new countries because just looking out of the window is already exciting, right? So I think the, the one hour journey will pass by very smoothly. Okay, so this is actually now my first time seeing rural China. You know, the last time I was in China, I was only in Shanghai because my visa was only valid for Shanghai so I wasn't allowed to leave the city so now we are riding basically through the countryside I think it's not super rural here because there are many bigger cities nearby so it's not a super rural area but still definitely more rural than what I've seen before in Shanghai and it's yeah very exciting for me very interesting I have the impression uh, that rural China also is very developed like I, I see proper roads everywhere everything looks decent and clean so I'm having really good first impressions of rural China so far and by the way guys feel also free to follow me on Instagram can abroad on Instagram I'm posting daily stories there you can always see my live locations where I am at the moment and some behind the scenes so feel free to follow me there as well Whew. and we have arrived about one hour later and that was a very easy and smooth ride so a great first experience taking a train in China and yeah now we are in Guangzhou one of the the biggest cities in China with about 20 million people living here and yeah I just had a look on the map and the train station where we are right now is quite far away from my hotel so we have to figure out basically how to get across half of the city but if the metro system is anywhere near as good as the one in Shanghai then I am in a good mood that this is going to be a smooth experience. And I see a sign, Guangzhou Metro already. Okay, I am a bit prepared now. I took a screenshot of the Metro map already, which is this one right here. So many, many lines here. So I need to take line number seven and then switch to line number three, line number seven. And wow, the sun is shining through here. It's about sunset time. Wow, that looks beautiful. I think I do have the same problem as before, that you need to scan the ID to enter the station. Uh, oh, there's a guy over there. Passport? Okay. Uh, line 7 entrance, right here. As you take the oh. the Do you hear that? Even English here. Ah, here we actually have a big map. So as you can see, the metro system also is quite complex here. And we are starting here. No, here. We are here. And the final destination is here. So we're going to take the green line and then we're switching here to the orange line and the train has arrived. So let's take the Guangzhou Metro and see what the experience is like. This is actually pretty cool. You can see by the color of the cards here how crowded they are. So currently I am a number two which is green, generally comfortable. Then you have mildly crowded and until the red is totally crowded it's very interesting so you can see always which card or which part of the train is currently busy and uh, where there are less people and here we are that was the first train ride now i need to find line three and there's a sign for line three so this was very smooth maybe 10 minutes now by the way it is almost 6 pm now which i guess is rush hour time and you can see it is pretty busy here already now but I have to say it's pretty organized here. Everywhere I have the orange signs here guiding me to line three. So pretty easy. Okay, here we are. So this time we have two directions and this is not the direction I need to go. So I have to take this side of the train and good timing, the train is already coming. All right, let me double check that my station is here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stations now. Okay, last leg of the journey and I am very hungry now and I'm very excited to try food once we have checked into the hotel. 
we have arrived. That was about 30 minutes in total. And this is the final station. Now I just need to figure out how to get out of the station. All right, are you ready for our first impressions of Guangzhou city? I'm quite exactly in the city center. I think so at least. And here we are. Whew, happy to have arrived. It is almost dark by now. It is like 6.15 now. Whew. It is a bit chilly here. That's why I'm wearing a sweatshirt all day already. Uh, by the way, for my next destination in China, I will need proper winter clothes, which I'm going to buy somewhere here in the next days. But wow, whew, happy to be here. First impression is really nice. Yeah, I guess same as in Shanghai, all the, the motorbikes here, the scooters are all electric because I hear nothing when these guys are driving by. So I know in Shanghai it was um, mandatory for all the motorbikes to be electric. Let me know in the comments if you know if that's the case here as well. And now actually I have to get to my hotel of course and there's actually one thing that I would like to figure out with Alipay. So I know how to pay with Alipay in like shops or restaurants. I know how to book trains or if I want to also flights or hotels. But something that is also really helpful with Alipay if I can actually use it is the little Didi app right here which is integrated into Alipay which is a taxi hailing app. Should work in theory like Grab in Southeast Asia or Uber in other parts of the world. So let's see if I can use that to get to my hotel. Okay, so I put in my destination and I do get different options here. Okay, let me just uh, confirm the request and then see what will happen. Oh, if this also really works, then I'm really off to a easy trip in China. This app makes my life so much easier here. All right, and I have a driver which is on the way. Express driver will arrive soon. We found a nearby driver for you. Okay, I think it's the, the right car over there is waiting. Must be that guy. Oh, the security guy is actually helping me. Indeed. Oh, yeah. Ah, xie xie. Thank you. Ah. Okay, here we go. Okay, hello, ni hao. Oh, I don't understand Chinese, sorry. <laughs> actually, I think you should say ni hao here, because it's Cantonese. No. Do you say ni hao or ni hao? Ni hao? Neho. I think it's Neho here because it's Cantonese and not Mandarin. We're getting closer to the meal of the day, the big reward. And I'm very excited for it. I'm very hungry. Oh. Oh, I'm not sure what you say. I think he doesn't understand me and I don't understand him. But that's fine. <laughs> oh, he's laughing. Okay. Good impression. Oh. Are you from Guangzhou? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I think all of these are restaurants here. So I think we do have a good option of places nearby. This is already the area near my hotel here. Oh, and there's a McDonald's. That's definitely not going to be my first meal here. Or any meal probably. Wow, I love all the, the neon lights here. It's so colorful, bright. Oh, very happy to be here. Very nice first impressions. Of course, the next video is going to be a proper video exploring around Guangzhou. Similar to Shanghai, I think most of the cars here are electric. It's very quiet here on the road. You hear this car almost makes no noises. Yeah, that was already really great in Shanghai. The noise level on the streets is very low because a lot of the cars are electric. And it seems to be the same case here. Yes, okay, yeah. My hotel is over there. <laughs> okay, okay, xie Okay, guys, yeah, checking in, checking out the the room and then we're going to find some delicious food here. Yeah, Guangzhou is uh, within the Canton region and Cantonese food, you probably heard about it before, it's very popular not only in China, basically all around the world. And I heard that this city is very famous for the Cantonese food. So I am of course very keen to try lots of that. And here we are, Paco Hotel. And yeah, the hotel here of course also accepts payment via Alipay. Okay, that was a smooth check-in experience as in any other country. Okay, it is now quite exactly 7 p.m. I left my hotel in Macau this morning, or it was already noon, around 12. So a seven hour journey to get here. 8352, that's my room number in German. Let's see what you can get in Guangzhou, China for 50 US dollar a night, including the breakfast. Whew. Oh, actually quite nice. I mean, I'm going to spend most of the time outside exploring the city anyway, but I think this is a proper nice room. Let me see if I can make some more lights. No, this is, ah, here we go. I think this is the maximum of light I have now. Um, let me get rid of my bag first, and then we have a quick look around. Do you remember my hotel in Shanghai? 
Maybe some of you have seen my video, my arrival video in Shanghai where I showed my hotel. And there the bathroom area was very open. There was not really a door to close it. And look at this, it's the same, almost the same here. So you can't totally close the bathroom from the rest of the room. Seems to be a Chinese style maybe. I mean, I totally don't mind because I'm alone here anyway. But uh, yeah, we have the toilet here. We have a big shower right here actually, really nice. And then the sink area is right here with towels, soap, everything that you need. We have a good looking bed. We have a little desk area. We have uh, coffee making facilities. We have a TV. And then I guess this is a view to the main road, which is a bit blocked by, yeah, you can't really see anything here. Okay, quick bed test. Well, actually it's dangerous now for me to go onto the bed because then I am Oh, it's gonna be nice just to stay there. Ah, oh, seven hours journey. I am back in China and I am very hungry now. So let's go eat. Okay, which direction should we go? Left or right? I think there are options on both sides. Let's go right. Because this is where I drove by with the taxi and I saw some options. What the problem is now that uh, I can't read any of the signs, obviously. So I have to figure out which restaurant is good by just the impression that I can get from looking at it from the outside. Oh, I see people sitting here. That's a good sign. Some locals. I see someone preparing some meat here, which could be pork. Hello. Let's see. Obviously, I can't read the menu. No pictures here. Uh, let's not go to the first option right away. But I think this is already a good option. But I do have some pictures here, which might be easier for me to order food. Oh, no, no. Can I get one of these? One? Yeah. Oh, this looks delicious. There's meat inside. Uh, one of this? Yeah. Okay. No idea what it is. I do have the feeling that people don't see many foreigners here. The way uh, people react to me. Very friendly though. Everyone is smiling, but I see a little bit of surprise on their face. But let's give this a try. I don't know what this is called, but I tried this already in Shanghai. Off camera though, and it was really delicious. It reminds me a little bit of something we have in Germany called Dona Kebab. So maybe this is the Chinese Dona Kebab. Oh, there's a lot of meat inside here actually. Mm. Oh wow, the flavor is so delicious. It tastes like braised pork. I think this is filled completely with braised pork. Mm. Oh, this is incredible. Wow, if you come to China, you can find this as a street food in many places. Give it a try. And I'm sure that someone in the comments can let us know what's the name of this. So now let's also figure out what this is here. So there's gonna be a filling inside, but I have no idea what's going to be the filling. I think it's vegetables. The taste reminds me about a spring roll. So, I think I see carrots in there. Not really sure what this is. Some small pieces. But overall, there's a fresh taste to this. Really good, actually. But both of these meals would be better fresh and warm, you know? It's pretty cold. So I imagine this to be way better when it's fresh and warm. There's a little shop here that actually looks quite nice. And I also have pictures here. So maybe I can get food here. Hello. Hey, how? Uh, this one? I think this is maybe dumpling soup or something. This one? Okay, one. Ten? I think it's maybe the one, yeah. Eat here. Eat here, one, yeah. Okay. Oh. Let me see if I can translate. Uh, no spicy. May all, may all spicy. Okay, no spicy. Uh, eat here, yeah, yeah. I will sit here. Yeah. Payment successful. Okay. I almost feel like a local now, being able to pay by just scanning the phone. Okay, it was just 10 yuan, so I guess it's gonna be a small size. Uh, let's just see what I will get. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. That looks good. So what we are having here is, uh, yeah, a soup with, uh, I think these are some dumplings here and then some, uh, some vegetables. And that's it. So basically, I think it's a dumpling soup. Let me try the broth first. Mm, that's already very flavorful and I think there's a nutty flavor to it. I'm not sure if they really put nuts inside. If you know this dish, 
please let me know. Please help me out in the comments. Let's see if I can eat one of the dumplings here already. Oh, it's very hot, I think. Oh, it's very good. I need to learn how to say delicious here. I forgot it. I was in Hong Kong last year and I learned to speak some Cantonese words there, but that's a year ago. So I don't really remember everything. I remember um, delicious in Mandarin was hao chi, I think. Very good. Very good. Delicious. Thank you. By the way, tomorrow I'm going to meet up with uh, my local friend here and she's going to show us around and also introduce us to authentic Cantonese food. So that's going to be one of the next videos then. Oh, I really love these. Maybe I'm going to order a second portion after this. All right, that was my first meal in Guangzhou. Definitely not my last meal. Yeah, the plan is I'm going to stay here a couple of days and then I will continue the journey to another interesting city here in China. And yeah, as I said earlier, feel free to subscribe to the channel, join the journey around China. And if you are new here and you haven't seen my previous videos from China, I was in Shanghai a few months ago and I filmed four videos there. And the first one, the arrival video, is this one right here. So feel free to check it out if you haven't yet. Stay healthy, stay positive and then see you on the next episode. Ciao, guys.